What's up everybody, it's your boy Nick Noodles coming at you with another great video. Before we get started though, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, it makes me know that like people appreciate the content, and also follow my Instagram, Nick Noodles YT. I go over streetwear news, sneaker news, supreme news, give more resale predictions after I post videos and stuff if things change, and I also have stuff for sale, so if you're looking for some good deals, cheaper than StockX prices, you know, definitely hit me up. Don't be shooting me lowball offers, but if you think my prices are capped, maybe we can work something out. This video is all about Swift Soul. I've been getting a lot of requests about it and comments, so I'm just gonna make one big video. Um, if I don't answer you know, any questions, you can comment down below and I'll try my best to get to them. I do have three quick disclaimers before we get started. One, I'm not sponsored by them. I do have an affiliate link down in the description, but pretty much anybody can get that link. It's, it takes like two seconds to sign up for it. And I only get like a small portion. They're not directly wiring me money to make this video. Second, this bot does not guarantee you success. Like all bots, some weeks they hit, some weeks they flop. You know, I hope Swift Soul continues to hit every week, but we never know. And that kind of goes into my last point that we really don't know where Swift Soul is going to go in the future. Everything I say in this video is subject to change based on the botting landscape and like what Supreme decides to do with their website. Going into a quick overview of the bot, it is $35 and that is a lifetime fee. They do have an option to do a premium plan where you get a few extra features. I'm not sure if those features are worth it yet because it just came out. Um, I haven't really used them that much, but you know, try it out. If you like the features that they offer with the premium pricing, then keep it. If you find yourself not using, then you can always leave. The bot is always in stock and that might change in the future. I don't think so though, because they already have 6,000 members in their Discord. So I don't think they're really concerned with like too many users on the platform, to be honest. Otherwise they would have cut off memberships a while ago. This is also an iOS only bot. Um, they have like a desktop version, but that one's sold out. I don't even know what that looks like. So I'm sorry to all the Android users out there. You chose the wrong team. I think they added support for iPads, which is pretty nice. Um, I run it on my iPhone because that's the only iOS device I have. Um, and I'm not sure like what other iOS devices work on it, like iPod touches and stuff like that. So I would just stick to using it on your iPhone if you can. Let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. All right, so looking at the app, um, you have five main tabs. The homepage has like statistics on your successful checkouts. I think if I show all of them, you see I only have a 15% success rate, which is because I usually run a bunch of tasks with different cards. Um, but yeah, again, you're not gonna hit every single week with Swift Soul. I did recently hit on the Yamamoto sweater, which I have proof of right here in hand. Um, probably gonna hold on to this until it goes up in value, but not really sure. So there isn't really much to say about the homepage. It kind of just gives you an overview, shows all your purchases. This is pretty much everything I've hit with um, Swift Soul. I don't use it that much because I've been going manual a lot, but it's been doing really good recently, so I'll probably just run this every week. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is create a profile. Um, you pretty much just go to the wallet looking tab and you hit the plus button to create a new profile. There's nothing special about this step. It's pretty intuitive. Um, fill out the information that you would normally use to check out on Supreme, and then you can save it. I have an example one right here, as you can see, Nothing special about it whatsoever. Um, there is a button in this top right corner that you can use to jig your address. So um, that is a premium feature, I believe. If I hit it, you'll see it'll add characters um, to the end of it. And we'll talk about the importance of jigging an address in a little bit. After you have one profile set up, you can go and create a task and you go to the checklist icon on the bottom. And I don't have any right now, so I'm just gonna hit the plus button. And you'll see there are a bunch of options. Let's just focus on creating a task first. And as you can see, they have a bunch of pre-made options. I would just focus on that if you're a beginner because it's kind of tricky to get the keywords right and the pre-made ones do it all for you. So they'll have a bunch of different items for the upcoming week. This hasn't been updated, likely because the drop list isn't like fully complete for this upcoming week. So we have a bunch of the Yamamoto stuff from the past week. You'll notice that they keep stuff that usually restocks like the bags, Air Forces, t-shirts, and socks. Um, so for this example, let's just do the underwear briefs. Um, and right when you pick an item, you'll see that there's a bunch of different options. So let's go through each box one at a time. First, we have quantity. Now, for the most part, you can only get one of everything. So if you know that you can get like multiples, like Ziploc bags, you can get a four count or like Oreos or um, the stickers that they have, the name tag ones, you can get multiples of those. Then you can play around with the quantity, but I would just um, leave it at one. 
For sizing, it's pretty straightforward. You just pick the size that you want, as well as for color, it's the same thing. Um, if you're in the EU, that might be a little sketchy because you're not really sure what colors are releasing until after the drop or literally during the drop. That's what's nice about being in the US because you can pretty much see what's exact you can see what colors are releasing for each shirt. If you only care about securing the piece like a box logo, you know, it doesn't really matter what size or color you get as long as you get one. You can just leave it on random and your odds are probably a little bit higher of copying because you're not just going for one item, you're essentially going for whatever's in stock at that moment. So yeah, if you want the best odds of copying, I would probably choose like a size larger medium, but then leave the color random so that you just get whatever's in stock. For profile, I only have one profile right now, but if you have two, then you can select between either one. You would only need to worry about proxies if you are IP band, which is very hard, I think, to do off an iPhone. We can cover a little bit later in this video how you might get IP band. Um, and then the last one, start type, there's manual and custom. So manual, you'll have to start the task on your own. And if it's custom, then you set like the exact time that you want the task to start. I always just do manual because there's a start all button that you can do and that's just a lot easier than having to worry about it custom starting on time. So you'll just hit save task and it'll save it correctly. Um, if we go back, we'll then see that task right there. Um, in order to start it, you can either tap it and hit start all. You can also clone it if you want, um, but it'll alert you because you're using the same address. We'll cover that a little bit later. Um, but yeah, if you want to start it, you just hit start. As you can see, I need a CAPTCHA. So before you start the actual task on drop day, there's a few things you wanna make sure you do. The first thing is to add a Gmail. So you'll hit the plus button at the top right, hit Gmail, um, select your email, you can log in if needed. And if done correctly, it'll say your Gmail account was imported. Um, Gmails are very, very important for Supreme because if you're not signed in, you will get CAPTCHAs um, and really bad CAPTCHAs like the slow fading ones which pretty much just slow down your checkout speed and Supreme is all about speed. There's no queues and stuff like that. So you're gonna wanna make sure you have a Gmail. Um, I would just use one that you like watch YouTube videos with or that you use for school because that will have a very good CAPTCHA score. I have a link in the description that you can test your Gmail on. And if the value it gives you is 0.9, that means that you have a very good Gmail and you'll get the best CAPTCHAs. If it's anything lower, that means you have a bad Gmail, probably because it's brand new or doesn't really have a lot of activity and thinks you're a bot. So just watch a bunch of YouTube videos, you know, use your email and that score should go up. But yeah, Gmail is very important for Supreme. Next, you're gonna wanna make sure your CAPTCHA harvester is up. Sometimes it pulls it automatically up when you need it to check out, sometimes it doesn't. So to ensure that it's just always there, you can hit the plus button again and just hit the harvester. Um, and so any captures that you need to check out will appear here. Um, if I try to start the task, it's just gonna get a processing checkout error because none of my information is right. So if you go there, you'll see we get a captcha. Um, we don't need it because I have my Gmail signed in likely. And um, now I'm just getting processing checkout errors. Um, so let's just go ahead and stop that. You can add multiple tasks, I think up to 10. So like, let's say I wanna add socks to this task. We can go ahead and do that using the same profile. Um, and then if I go back to the screen, we can take advantage of the start all feature. So you can, you know, just manually start it and stop it. Um, but if you have a bunch of tasks, you're gonna wanna use the start all option. So you just go to this plus sign in the top right again, hit start all and it'll start running those tasks. Um, and then if you wanna stop all of them all at once, you can also stop. So let's say I have them both going, right? And they're both in queue like this. So that means they're processing. Let's say one checks out and I don't want the other one. I can simply just stop one um, and it'll still continue the other task. So if you only want one of one item, but you have multiple tasks going, after you get that first checkout, I would just stop all the other ones so that you don't get any more. Looking at the settings page, there's a bunch of different options, but there's only two that really matter and that's compact view and use custom delays. So for compact view, you'll see there's a bunch of different information when I have my task set up. But if I use compact view, it kind of streamlines all of that as it should. And so pretty much all I'm gonna see is the item I'm going for and the process that it's at in terms of checking out. I recommend using that if you have a bunch of tasks, it just makes it easier to manage. Next, let's go over custom delays. And if you're like a new user, I wouldn't even worry about them at all. Most of the time I don't use them unless I'm running for restock. So let's turn it on and talk about each of these settings. So monitor delay is how fast it's refreshing your website. So 500 milliseconds 
every half second it's going to hit refresh and see what is on the Supreme site. Now if you set this too low, then Supreme will detect that you're, you know, setting all these requests to their website and that is how you can get IP man. So I wouldn't recommend doing it any faster than like 100 or 200. Otherwise, you're probably going to get IP banned. If you're running for restocks, I would set that to three to 500. Checkout delay is intuitive as it sounds. It's how much time it takes to check out once the item is in your cart. If you do this too fast, that's how you get high traffic errors when you go manual. And if you're a bot, then it just declines your order. Um, and that's just one of Supreme's bot protection implementation. So you don't want to have that too low. Again, I just use the default settings that Swissle uses. If you're doing restocks, you can keep this at zero because they usually don't run bot protection during restocks. Um, but if you want to use custom delays on like an actual drop, I would set this no lower than 1500. Otherwise you're going to get declined. And then error delay is like, if you get an error like high traffic or something like that, it's determining how long to wait before trying to check out again. I don't really have it that much experience with that variable, but I can imagine that if you try to do it too fast, it could like, you know, see that activity and ban you. So now let's talk about trying to increase your odds of copying on drop day. You can do this a few different ways, but there is a little bit of risk involved because Supreme doesn't like people copying multiple of the same item, especially if you're using the same address and the same credit card. Um, they can like card ban you or address ban you and then you have to go through a bunch of hoops to just buy normal stuff on Supreme. So you're going to want to jig an address if you're shipping to the same address and you're using either a different or the same credit card. So let's say I want to try to get two of one item and Swiss will makes this pretty easy to do. I can just clone the profile I have now and it'll save most of the information. Ideally, you want to use a different credit card for this to work. You could use the same credit card, but you risk, you know, getting banned from their website. So I would just use a different one. And Swiftsoul makes it very easy to jig your address because they have the feature if you're on their premium plan. So I'm going to jig it and show you what happens. So if I hit this button, it's going to change a few stuff. One, it adds a bunch of characters to the end of my address. Now. This may look kind of funky, but it doesn't actually affect UPS delivery at all. Um, they'll pretty much just ignore those characters and Supreme will think this is a totally new address. Um, it didn't change my email address. I would just change it just to be sure. Um, it does change the phone number, which I know you need to change. Um, and then you can keep like all your other information the same. So yeah, once I do that, I can save the profile um, and then I can go to my task, create a different task. Let's say I want to clone this task and you'll see that it is alerting me that I'm using like the same card and there's like risk involved with that. Uh, but you're gonna wanna change your profile. So let's say I go here, I edit it, and then I can change profile, test profile to test profile copy. Usually the way I name mine is just like debit and then debit jig. Ideally you would wanna use a different card, but if you think about you know statistics and probability, um, your odds of copying are pretty slim at once. So the odds of both task hitting that are using the same card is probably pretty slim. Um, so you may want to take that risk. You may not want to. I would just recommend using a different card if possible. If you don't have multiple credit cards, you could always try to you know, reach out to some of your close friends, see if they'll let you use their information. Um, that kind of sounds silly, but you could try and convince them, especially if you like offer them money in return. So like, hey, I'll give you $20 if you let me use your information to try and buy a box logo. Maybe more if you're getting something like that because that's a little bit more premium. So the way I usually use Swift Soul is I will set up tasks using my credit card and then I will try to cop manually using my debit card and I'll just jig my address both ways so that way if I check out on my computer and I check out on Swift Soul, my odds of getting banned and my orders canceled is a little bit lower. But yeah, that was a lot of information and hopefully a short amount of time. So if you have any questions whatsoever, please comment down below. Um, and yeah, thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.